for your questions. But um, Rialda, do you, did you want to kind of open the discussion with a short uh, statement of any kind that you'd like to say? Or? That's why I made a film. Right, yes. <laughs> so uh, the film, I always had something in mind because um, this concept of, uh, I never really heard much discussion between the two groups um, whenever I would go back to Bosnia or talk to peers. And um, I wanted to make a, a film that would sort of trigger a conversation that I feel nobody's having in Bosnia, which is um, how do we move on from what's happened um, in 92 to 95 um, and, and how do we live together? How do the younger generations move on uh, past this and, and, and live together, go to school together, and, and actually form relationships with one another? So that, that really motivated me to kind of go back and, 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 and sort of see, see what I find. Okay, so at this point, we'd like to open it up for uh, questions from the audience. Who has a question for Rialda? Anybody? Yes. Right. I was wondering, um, um, one, one was the, I had asked my friend here, um, the history of, of Christianity in, in Islam, um, and when, um, when Bosnians as, as indigenous people took on uh, the Islamic religion, and then when if, if that was discussed, and then when the Serbian people had taken, or the Serbian people, if they were indigenous, or if they had come down, then started practicing Christianity, or was it uh, another indigenous uh, spiritual? Well, I mean, the region was, was, you know, conquered by so many different sides from the East and the West. And so you had a mixture of many different religions and cultures coming to the region. So uh, Bosnia is is an example of what happens when 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 you have that. You know, <clears throat> you have many different religions living in one country. Um, <clears throat> does that does that answer your question, or Riala, Did you want to? I mean, I think are, are you referring to more of a historical context? I'm not an expert or anything. Well, I'm thinking of you know when the when the sorry. When they were, you know, because I feel like it was completely wrong for them to just be like, well, now we're going to take over this part of the land and you all have to die or leave. Mm -hmm. um, just genocidally, you know. Um, sure. But I was, I was like, what gives, what, what, what in our, what in their minds gave, gave them the right to do so? Sure, and that's a, a lot of where the, the conflict and the tension comes from, I think. Um, you know, a lot of the, the Bajis feel like, feel like they weren't, sort of justice was never, um, justice never came, so that's what, you know, a lot of people are upset about that were affected by this. Um. Yeah, so <clears throat> do you want to talk a little, a little bit more about, um, you know, you went back 20 years after uh, the war for the first time, you were a, a very young child, and uh, you wanted to see what your life could have been like today. And can you talk, expand more on some of the challenges that um, young people face there today? Sure. So I never actually lived in, I mean, I lived in Bosnia for three years as a young child, but I don't remember that time, uh, that period of my life. Um, so going back was just sort of a, uh, <coughs> quite the journey for me. I wanted to see kind of what my life could have been had I stayed there which a lot of, you know, young people that I met, you know, they returned um, to Srebrenica. So, um, and it was quite uncomfortable. I mean, I, my family, we, per we had a lot of losses. We have a lot of losses. My dad is actually burying his two brothers this summer in Srebrenica. So it was, it, it's very, um, it kind of just like really hits home. So it was diff it's really difficult to sit in front of a Serb knowing that, you know, uh, you know, possibly someone in their family could have killed my, you know, grandfather or uncles and um, sort of like never really knowing. So it was just that, I was sort of just exploring that, that dynamic of the space of just like feeling really uncomfortable. It wasn't, um, I wasn't planning on making a documentary that sort of explains the war, uh, you know, in detail and, uh, but just sort of an expose of, uh, 
you know, a, a, you as a person in this space that's sort of still haunted, I feel like, by, by its past, so. Okay. Um, so, did you, did you have a chance to um, talk to some of the people after, from the film after you made it, and what did they think of it? And also, well, go ahead with, you, if, yeah, go ahead with that question first. Sure, yeah, so, um, I, the, the, particularly the, the surf character, Nina, in my film, so she saw it with her family, um, with her dad and her mom and brother, and they actually weren't aware that, that, you know, I was as uncomfortable as I was, uh, and uh, that, you know, possibly other people might feel the same way. Um, so they were actually quite surprised. Um, I still keep in touch with them and we speak on a regular basis. So I think it was just like an eye-opener and the, the film was made to evoke a conversation that's not being had. Uh, and, you know, and that, that's why I made the film. Um, but actually the, the painting of Rock and Lodge is no longer there. So. Yes. Do we have a microphone? So, thanks, Samina. Is there any dialogue among that generation sort of of the past and what happened and kind of looking back, or is it um, primarily just not discussed so much as sort of looking forward and then how do we you know, move forward from here? Right. I don't think there's much dialogue of like what's happened because they, they were sort of, especially the really younger generations, they were born after, so after 95, they, <coughs> They're a bit more open, you know, Bajans and Serbs are very much open and they have a lot of peers that are, you know, uh, from a different religion. But, um, the, oh, sorry. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's just, um, yeah, so it's like, it, th there's not enough of that, I feel like. I feel like there could be more, not necessarily like to dissect the war, but more so like how can we, you know, form relationships and like, what do we do next, you know, to like move forward? I got a quick question on this. Do you think that a big part of resolving some of the issues is how history is taught, which is, a, I think, a big focus for the future? And as long as people that survived the war or of a different ethnic background are teaching their kids about what happened and they're passing it on, there's really going to be a difficult time for that to be resolved because you do listen to your parents, and you are taught what happened, true or not. And unless you're taught what exactly happened, you know, the truth in your school system, it really doesn't get resolved until you see a generation of people pass on, and there's no one left to tell the story that survived. Which Absolutely. Which is what you could argue why the war started. Mm -hmm. You were about 20 years away from World War II survivors being passed on, but the stories at the coffee the bars are very much the culture of telling history and about the wars that it gets passed on and passed on. And you see seven year old kids understanding something that they shouldn't, but it was passed on, so I don't know. And Absolutely. Just keeps going. Yeah, and I mean, I can definitely say that in my own home too. My parents, being people who have lost, um, experienced significant loss, they're obviously going to be you know, on the Bosniak side, and maybe the same can be said about a Serb family who's maybe lost someone or experienced um, their own trauma. But I do agree with you. I think that the, the school systems are definitely not doing enough, and I think there's a lot of denial still. Um, there's not enough people owning up to what has happened, or, uh, and I think there's a lot of that. That's why I think it's important to have these conversations that are very uncomfortable, um, that are not being had, not being, not happening, so. Okay, and all of a sudden we have 10 questions, right? <laughs> and when I asked if anybody had a question, and we're out of time, so Tanya, can, can we please get Tanya's, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, but we're almost out of time, you guys. So I just want to thank you so very much, and I want to commend your courage in going back and making this film. And I have, I have a sense that, you know, given my own research and work there, that there's an erasure, erasure of memory, that there, there is a sort of like amnesia that has set in. So when there are conversations, 
they must be not very well informed and mm -hmm. or everybody's got fear because there's fear on both sides. Mm -hmm. I'd like you to talk about that experience of that fear. Absolutely. I mean, I was also guilty of that. I came there as a filmmaker, you know, wanting to have these conversations, and I and I fell into that trap of always having this weight and this fear. Like, what can I say? What can I not say? Am I going to offend this serve if I say a certain thing? Um, so there's fear on both sides, and I and and I and I'm just sort of trying to figure out how to get past that and, and you know and I, I think dialogue is the way maybe so okay we just have one more question yes uh, I'm sorry I'm just yes uh, I'd like to thank all of you who are not Boston and came tonight it really means a lot to us because why would you you know your uncles and the brothers didn't get killed there means you really really had a good heart and really did it from my heart want to thank you i also want to tell you and uh, why we are asking why did they do that i will tell you that my grandmother uh, during second world war lost every single man in her family every single man in her village so she came back it was in her segovina she came back to her village with only children and her mother-in-law. So that may explain to you why is this happening or why this happened in Srebrenica or in this Bosnian war. So not that Serbians are bad, I'm not saying that, but there is something, something, I don't know, going on with, with the having, uh, I would say, uh, like a Bosnian country, I mean, a Muslim country or a Muslim village in Europe is one of the heavy populated areas. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, gentleman in the back. And that's the last question. Thank you. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, right there. Here, 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 there is a village in Bosnia, uh, in the Federation side, right? About over 60% of it is Serb, right? Now, throughout the whole war, it was under the Bosnian control, right? And there were no death camps, it was not one Serb dead, everything was fine. And in Srebrenica, while it was under Nasser Orich's control, also not one Serb was harmed. I just want to get your opinion on that, if I can, please. Uh, my opinion on like Nasser Oric. <laughs> no, in general, I'm saying whatever Bosnian army controlled relatively was peaceful count for all religions, all three religions. Not one was hurt, you know, especially the Serbs, even though they were toward, aggressive towards us. I just, well, I do want to say there definitely was Serb atrocities. I mean, especially in this region, um, you know, uh, there was definitely. But I think that when you compare the numbers, I mean, it just like it's very much so like a big difference so i do want to note that there definitely was like serb atrocities too when nasa orge was the commander of the bosnian serb army uh, the, the the bosnian army i mean you know they did attack some serb villages too that's speculated actually but in Srebrenica, not one serb was harmed while it was under his control not one serb okay yeah. i would Okay, I would uh, strongly suggest that everyone comes tomorrow to the 5 p.m. film Seeking Truth in the Balkans and there's so much more about this in the film and there's a big discussion after the film. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming.